Hello and welcome to this Microsoft Fabric episode. In this episode, I'm going to walk you through practically how we can implement incremental data loading from the SharePoint folder to Fabric Warehouse without duplicating data. This is going to be an in-depth end-to-end project, so I'm going to encourage you to walk along this video and if you enjoyed this video, please make sure you give this video a thumb up, share with your friends, and let me know what you think about it. Let's get started. So what I would like to show you first is the source data on my local laptop, and then we're going to move to moving the data into my SharePoint folder, and then we're going to create our data flow gen 2, perform the cleaning and transformation, and then we're going to create our warehouse, create some tables, watermark, and then we're going to move to data pipeline activities, and then we're going to move to increment the data load and then create our Power BI report. So I'm going to come to this folder on my laptop. In here, I've got Finance 2018 to 2025 Excel workbooks. Now in 2018, I'm going to show you the content. I've got this all the date column in column A, and then we have the year, region, subcategory, product, price, sales columns in a single column. So we're going to split all of this in data flow gen 2 using the splitter, and then we're going to perform further cleaning and transformation by a pain and so on. So I'm going to come to this folder and I'm going to go to my browser. So I'm going to land the 2018 and 2019 into this finance Excel data in my OneDrive. So I'm going to come here and then select both of these files and then let me just move down a little bit, drag across into this Excel finance data folder and then we have the 2018 and 2019. Now in each of the files we have 49 records excluding the error. So I'm going to come to this 2019 Control shift down arrow key at the bottom in the status bar. I'm going to say 49. When I come to the 2018, let's just see that in the Excel on the web again. And I'm going to come to cell A2, control shift down arrow key at the bottom in the status bar. We have 49. So basically, we have 49 records in each of the Excel files 2018 to 2025. Please take note of that. Okay, so we have this sorted. Now we want to come to our app.powerbi.com. So in this case, I've got this SharePoint to Fabric WH incremental data load workspace with no items created. So I'm going to click on the new and I want to create our data flow gen 2. I'm going to give a meaningful name to this. I'm going to call this one data flow for SharePoint to Fabric WH. That is my warehouse. And press enter to commit. Now we want to click on the get data and I want to click on the more option at the bottom. And I'm going to search for SharePoint folder. Click on that. And I'm going to provide the site URL. I'm going to come to either the 2018 or 2019 Excel on the web. And I'm going to carefully copy some part of the URL because we don't need everything. So from this very point, I'm going to select to the left. So this could be your company name or whatever. Just make sure you do not copy this underscore layout. Control C and I'm going to come here and let me close this. Okay. I'm going to control V. So this is not going to work. I'm going to scroll to the left and delete some part of the URL. So I'm going to carefully come here after this personal. I'm going to select this part and delete. So we want to make sure that we have the my.sharepoint.com forward slash personal forward slash your name and the name of your company and so on. So this is what we need as the site URL. Now for the connection credentials, I'm going to click on this edit connection and then we can provide the authentication kind. So I'm going to be using the organizational account. And of course, I am currently signed in into my personal tenant. So click on next. We're going to see preview folder data. So we're going to see all the content, the name, extension, data access, modified, created, attribute, folder. So I'm going to go ahead and click on create. All right. So I'm going to collapse this for now. And then I can apply filters to the specific data that I need. So we have data such as Excel, the PPT, DOC, and so on. So I'm going to filter the extension to only pick the Excel dot xl is x extensions so i'm going to click on these and i'm going to go ahead and apply filters that contains so text filters that contains the excel book so i can pick that here and then click ok so this is going to filter 
to only show all the files that contain Excel workbooks. And then we are focusing on finance. So I'm going to apply filter to this main column that pick or that contains the finance. So I'm going to apply filter, click on this, and then text filters that contains finance. So I'm going to type in finance here and then click OK. All right, so we can see finance 2018 and 2019.xlsx extension. That's cool. Now, we don't need all these property columns because we want to focus on the binary column that is holding the Excel files. So I'm going to right click on the content, right click, and then remove all the columns. So this is going to be documented in the applied step of the Power Query. So we want to access the property columns of the binary of the Excel files. Now, to do that, I'm going to come to the Add Column tab under the General. I'm going to click on Create Custom Column. And then I'm going to provide a name for the new column name. So this doesn't matter for now. I can go with this custom default. And then for the custom column formula, I'm going to use the M function called Excel.workbook M function. So I'm going to type that here carefully. And this is absolutely case sensitive. So each of the words must be capitalized. The E, W must be capitalized. And then this require a book as a binary. So I'm going to double click on the content because the content column is holding the binary in form of Excel workbook. So double click and then click on OK. So we're going to have this table dot add column and then we have the previous step and then we have the custom for each of the Excel files in the Excel dot workbook content. That's fine. Now I'm going to click on this custom column exclamative icon and then I'm going to see the name data item kind eating so I want to filter the name column to see the appropriate data I need so we have the transaction 2018 and 2019 I can click on this open space I'm going to see the content of the 2018 so we have the order date for the 2018 so when i click on this open space i'm going to see the order date for the 2019 that's brilliant so i'm going to click on this content hold now the shift key or the control key and then click on the name column right click and then remove columns so we don't need them again so we only need the table that is stored in the data column name. So we're going to logically append the two files so that it's going to be dynamic. To do that, I'm going to come to the formula bar and use a function called table.combine function. This is going to combine the two files and other file that is coming later, 2020 to 2025. And then I'm going to open a square bracket and I'm going to type in the column that contains the table that I want to append. So this is going to be this data column here. So I'm going to close the bracket for the table.combine function. And I can click on this to commit. And there we go. We have the data stacked on top of each order. Cool. Now, I'm going to go ahead and promote the first row as error, and that's been done easily. And then I'm going to go ahead and split this column, the year, region, price, subcategory price, and so on. So I'm going to right click on this con column and then use the splitter, split column by delimiter. Now, Power Query Online, unlike the Power Query Desktop in Excel and Power BI, are so smart to discover the separator automatically. So this is a comma separator, okay? I'm gonna click okay. And then we have the data split into several columns, which is exactly what I'm looking for. Now, before I go on, I'm gonna to come to this year column and I'm gonna see this year. Now, I'm gonna see this year because we append 2018 and 2019 that do have their separate headers. So I'm gonna check this out and it's gonna actually remove all the rows that contains the year, all the dates, and so on. So click OK. So that has been taken care of. And we're going to see that we have the automatic data type applied, which is absolutely fine. So this now being interpreted as a whole number data type as against the text data type previously. That's fine. Now, I'm going to come to the order date and change this from the no data type ABC123 to a proper date data type. So click on date and I'm going to come here and this is going to be the year column and then press enter. So we can see the calendar icon telling us this is now a proper date data type and this is going to be our region. So I'm going to rename the column 
press enter to commit and this is going to be our sub category column okay and i'm going to rename this as the product column and press enter and this is going to be the price column and this is going to be sales column so i'm going to have the order date year region subcategory product price and sales amount columns cool now before i move on i'm going to come to my github and i'm going to create my warehouse zone in the fabric warehouse and i'm going to create a lot of tables and we're going to create stored procedure now i'm going to create a table that's going to be named share points to fabric sales data now when you look at the columns you're going to have the order date year region subcategory product price units and sales now in our case we don't have the units all right but we're going to be creating a unit in this destination table so what do we do we're going to create what's called a derived column so to do that i'm going to click on the sales column order the shift key or the control key click on the price column in that order and then under the add column tab we'll come to the from number group and then i'm going to use the standard and then we're going to perform a divide so we are dividing the sales column by the price column and this is going to give us the unit column and i'm going to double click and call this one units press enter and i'm going to change the data type from decimal number to a whole number data type the same thing as integer data type in sql platform cool and i'm going to move this to the middle of the price and the sales column so we're going to have the price unit and sales in the same order price unit and sales so that we don't have conflicting positioning of our columns so this must be satisfied so everything is looking good here now we're gonna come to the home tab and then under the query i can add data destination now we can add destination externally such as azure sql database and internally into the lake house azure data explorer that is the qso query language platform the real-time analytics and then we have the synapse warehouse okay so we don't have any for now so what i'm going to do if you're new to this platform i'm going to come here now there's an option to publish now to a selected destination and we can even publish later because this allow is going to allow us to move out of the data flow gen tool and then go back to our workspace so i'm going to publish later not now so this is going to close the power query online and then store all that we've done and then we are back to the sharepoint to fabric warehouse incremental data load workspace fine now i'm going to click on the mail and i want to create our fabric warehouse i'm going to call this one sharepoint to fabric wh and then click on create okay so we can build our warehouse i'm, I'm going to click on tsql and i'm going to come to my github again i'm going to put the link of this github so that i can copy this and use it for maybe your normal in practice or maybe even a real production level so i'm going to copy all of this scripts down and i'm going to explain everything in detail so i'm going to get rid of this Control V to paste, and we're going to create a table as I've mentioned named SharePoint to Fabric Sales Data that's going to contain the order date as the data data type, year, region, subcategory, product, price, units, sales with the appropriate data types. So we're going to have this as a very character of 30, 20, 30, 40 length, and then we're going to have the integer for all of this. So I'm going to create this table. Now we're going to load the data from our data flow gen tool into this target table in our warehouse first. So before I do that, I'm going to scroll down and then I want to come to this new table. So we're going to create another table called SharePoint to Fabric Watermark Table. Now we're going to have two columns, table name with variable character of 255, and then we're going to have the watermark value with date data type now this is going to actually allow us to load our data based on the last load date and i'm going to ingest or insert a record into that table in a moment so i'm going to go ahead and create this table and i can see this has been created in one second five three three millisecond and i'm going to insert this record this sharepoint to fabric six data we created here and i'm going to insert this 1753 January 1st. Now, this is the last acceptable oldest date that is recognizable in Microsoft 
SQL Server. So I'm going to go on and insert just one record into the table. And then we have the name of the table, table name, watermark value, and then we are inserting values into the as the SharePoint to Fabric says data, and then we have this date. So click on this to run. And then this is created. So I can check the SharePoint to Fabric sales data table we just created. So I'm going to see the schema with no record. You can see rows is zero and eight columns and no records. And I can also investigate the watermark table we just created. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to control V to paste and I can go on and select. And I'm going to see the single record we just inserted. Okay, so we have the SharePoint to Fabric sales data and then we have the watermark value this default value in a way so i'm going to move down and let's go to the next path so we're going to create what's called a third procedure named watermark update and we're going to have two parameters the last modified date as a date data type and the table name as a variable character of 50 length data type and we're going to use the you know standard which is as begin and i'm going to use the if function so i'm going to check if the last modified date is greater than this 1759 1st of january and then we're going to start by updating the sharepoint fabric watermark table we just created at the top and then we're going to use the set keyword to set this watermark value column equal to the parameterized last modified date of this third procedure and then we're going to use the where clause where the table name coming from this table is equal to the parameterized table name of our stored procedure and then we're going to go ahead and use the end else and just go ahead and end this create stored procedure so i'm going to go ahead and run this now we need a stored procedure in order to be able to load new day data coming into our data flow gen 2 into the warehouse that is the table so this is really important process in our data flow which i'm going to show you more later on so let me check this for now whether this has been created so this has been created now we can check all the tables we've created the two tables and one stop procedure i'm going to come here expand and then we can see that we have the sales data table and then the watermark table and then i'm going to click on the start procedure and then we have the watermark underscore update start procedure fine so we are done with this now i'm going to go back to my workspace and then i want to load the data from the data flow gen 2 into the fabric warehouse table we just created the sales data table so click on this and then i can add the data destination and then go ahead and publish now so in the on tab, I'm going to click on the add data destination. And then I'm going to choose the warehouse. So this is going to be picked up automatically. Click on the next. And then I can go on and specify the table. Now the data flow gentle will try to create a new table automatically, but I'm going to use existing table to have more control. So click on this and I'm going to expand this SharePoint to Fabric WH warehouse and i'm going to point to that sales data table and then we can see the schema the column names and then we can see the appropriate data types so we can see we have two items on that this works this way out so i'm going to click on next and then we're going to come to the choose destination settings so we're going to have update methods such as append or replace i'm going to stick with this default replace and then we come to the color mapping so we're going to see the source column names the order dates to the sales column and then we have the same column names in the destination the order dates to the sales and then we do not have any conflict of the data types we have the date own number text and then we have the integer that is the own number data type so this is fine click on save settings and then we're going to see the add data destination blank out because this has been specified i'm going to look here at the bottom i'm going to see the data destination and then when i over my mouse i'm going to see the detail so it's going to be warehouse not lake house and i'm going to see the name of the workspace the name of the warehouse the name of the schema and then the name of the table and then the update method as replace not append so this adjusts the detail of the destination so i can go on and publish now i'm going to click on the ellipsis of the data flow gen 2 i'm going to click on the refresh history to check the status so this should be success succeeded okay 
fine, we have the succeeded, and of course, if, if it failed, we're gonna say the failed here. So this is fine. I can say the start time, and then we have the duration, the type, which is on demand. So I'm gonna go to my warehouse and check this out in the sales data table. Now, don't forget, in our source, we added two Excel files, 2018 and 2019, that contains 49 records in each of the files. This is going to give us 98 rows in total. So I'm going to come here and check this out. I'm going to expand this, go to this database, and I want to expand this DB and the table name, and I'm going to see 98 records. So this is exactly what I'm waiting for. So this is working fine. We have 2018, and then when I search for 2019, I can see the 2019. This is fine. So we are done with this for now. Now I'm going to go to the data pipeline. Now I'm going to come here to the workspace, and then I want to create a data pipeline. So I'm going to have quite some few data pipeline activities, and I'm going to explain everything in detail. I'm going to call this data pipeline SharePoint to Fabric Pipeline. And I'm going to click on create. Okay, so we have built a data pipeline to organize and move your data. Now I'm going to start off by clicking on this pipeline activity. Of course, I can come here, it doesn't matter, but I love to use this. So I'm going to, in no specific order, add any activity that I need. So I can use the copy data, so this is fine. So this is going to be in the designer of data pipeline canvas. So I'm going to come to the activities and I'm going to use the data flow. Now the data flow is really important to orchestrate the data for the data flow platform into our copy data activity linking to our fabric warehouse. So I'm going to drag this on success connect to the copy data activity. And I'm going to provide the settings for the data flow and I'm going to call this one data flow for SharePoint to fabric warehouse and i'm going to come to the settings in the settings i'm going to provide the name of the workspace where this data flow is being housed and i'm going to provide the name of the data flow so click on this drop down and i'm going to choose the data flow for sharepoint to fabric wh and this has been sorted now i'm going to use the lookup activity two lookups now for the first lookup i'm going to call this one the old watermark value so i'm going to see the default date value the 1759 1st of january in our SQL query we executed not too long. And let's continue. I'm going to call it an old watermark. Okay. And then I'm going to come to the settings. So in the settings, I'm going to provide the connection. So this is going to be coming from my SharePoint to Fabric W8 warehouse. And I'm going to see use query. So we can use table query stored procedure. So I'm going to use query. And in the query, I'm going to add dynamic content. Now, in the dynamic content, I'm going to provide an SQL query that's going to return the maximum value from the watermark value table. And I'm going to provide an alias and the name of the table. So let's go ahead and write that. Select. And I'm going to make this to be readable. Press the tab key, use the max function. And then I'm going to provide the name of the table. Now, in order for you to understand what I'm doing, I'm going to close this for now and return to my warehouse. And I'm going to go down to my query. And in the query, and I'm going to scroll up. And in this part, I'm going to provide this watermark value column that is located in this table. So Come to C, come here, and I'm going to expand this again. And within this, open and close bracket, Ctrl V, and I'm going to provide an alias. I'm going to call this one as old watermark, old watermark value. Okay, so I'm going to use this old watermark value, and I'm going to provide the name of the table. Now, this is coming from the again, let me close this and come back here. And I'm going to provide the name of the table, which is this um, SharePoint to Fabric watermark table. So this is what I'm talking about. Control C and come back to the data pipeline and then expand this and press the tab key, Control V. So we have to select the latest or the newest value from the watermark value column. And then we provide an alias as the old watermark value from this watermark table. So I'm going to click on OK. And when I click OK, I can go on and preview data. And I'm going to see the content is going to return the 1759 or 53 January 1st.
Okay, there we go. So you can see 1st of January 1753, and then we have the old watermark value, which is the alias that I provided. So I'm going to close this for now, and then I'm going to drag this on success to the copy data activity. And I'm going to move this here. Now, coming to the second lookup, I'm going to create the new watermark value so i'm going to use this come to this old one quickly i'm going to come to the settings and i'm going to just copy this Control c come here to this new one and in the general get rid of this Control v and then i'm going to replace this as new so this is going to be new watermark lookup and i'm going to come to the settings now in the settings i'm going to provide a connection which is going to be the same share points to fabric warehouse warehouse and then I'm going to use query and then I'm going to come to the query and add the dynamic content. Now for the dynamic content, I'm going to provide a select. Okay. And in the select, I'm going to use a function called coalesce function. Now the coalesce allows me to use a default date value if the maximum of the other date column is empty. So this is going to result into the 1759 January 1st without giving me a null. So coalesce, and I'm going to use a function called the max, and then I will point to the other date column. Now don't forget we have the other date column as part of the sales data column and then i can provide after this putting a comma so for the argument of the call is i'm going to just type inside the single code 17 and 53 and i'm going to provide the month and then i'm going to provide the month and the day and i'm going to alias this as new watermark value so new watermark value and i'm going to provide the name of the table so this is going to be coming from and let me close this for now and let's go back to our warehouse now i'm going to scroll up now don't forget we have the order date oh, so this is going to be our the column that we're going to be focusing on based on the record that we are looking to 2018 and 2019 and then the 2020 later on so i'm going to take this name of the table ctrl c come back to my data pipeline expand this and i'm going to control v to paste so you have to select the maximum that is the latest order date from the order date column from this um, table now if in the case we don't have the any dates in this order date column then run this colise and then give us this default value Okay, now I'm going to quickly come to the 2019 file and I'm going to use a function called the max, just like what you're using over there. And I'm going to get the max of these values, of this date value. So close the bracket. So this is going to give me December 31st, 2019. So the December 21st, 2019 is the max, the oldest date from this 2019 data. So I'm going to come back here and I can click OK for now. So let me click on the preview data, and this should give us the same date, this um, December 31st, 2019. Okay, so you can see we have the December 31st, 2019 returned as the new watermark value date. So this is the last, latest, or the newest date based on the two files we ingested into our warehouse now i'm going to close this for now and then i can come to the copy data and in the copy data and i'm going to just give this a name copy data from um, sharepoint let me just provide sharepoint to fabric wh and i'm going to come to the source now in the source i'm going to provide a connection and it's going to be the same data share points to fabric warehouse and i'm going to use the query for the use and again i'm going to use a dynamic content now in this i want to select all the rows from the sharepoint sales data and i'm going to use the where clause to check where the other date is greater than the old lookup value and where the other date is less than or equal to the newest lookup value and then we're going to return the aliases so i'm going to type in select and then press the tab key star and then i want to return the column so this is going to be the sharepoint again i'm going to go ahead and copy the name of the column so that i can understand what i'm doing and i'm going to copy this come to c come back and i'm going to come here and i'm going to come here and control v so i'm going to use the where clause so i'm going to say where 
Now, don't forget we have the other date. So we have all the date column is greater than, and I'm going to use the at symbol. Now, the at symbol is standard here. So for the at symbol, I'm going to point to the old watermark that contains the fourth row only. Press the tab key, and I'm going to put in dot, and I want to return the output of the fourth row. And then I'm going to put in dot, and I'm going to provide the alias we use or specified not too long. So I'm going to close this for now. I'm going to come to this old watermark, the old, come to the settings. I'm going to come here, and I'm going to copy this as this old watermark alias and I'm going to close this, come back to the copy data activity, I'm going to come here and I'm going to, after this dot, control V, okay, now this is going to return this kind of error. Now this must be surrounded inside the code activity, so I'm going to quickly copy this part or cut, control X and I'm going to use a curly bracket, control V and that's the standard and again this expression must be inside a single code, control X open a single quote, control V. So please make sure you have this um, single quote, single quote on both sides. Otherwise, this is not going to work if you don't have single quotes, okay? So this is really important. And I'm going to use the and, and I'm going to use, provide the other dates again. So I'm going to deal with the newest record. And I'm going to say where this is less than or equal to, and again, at symbol. And I want to focus on the latest watermark ah, now i can see the latest because we don't have any relationship thus far i made a mistake no worries i'm going to close this for now so this is what i'm talking about i can see this is not connected to the copy data activity so i'm going to drag this connect to the copy data activity which is really important so you can see this are connected lovely and i'm going to come back here open this up and i can continue here so i'm going to just get rid of this add symbol again and i can see the new watermark lookup value so select and dot Output dot first row dot and I'm gonna close this for now again. I'm gonna get the alias that I specified here. So come to this new watermark, click on this, and I'm gonna get this new watermark value alias. Close this, come to this copy data, open this up, and I'm gonna control V to paste. And again, I'm gonna select all of this, control X, open a curly braces, control V, and again, I'm gonna select the whole thing. Ctrl X, single quote, Ctrl V. So now this can look so technical, but there's actually no big deal in it. So let me just explain again. Let me move this down. Okay. So first, we are selecting all the rows from this sales data table where the order date column is greater than the old watermark. This simply means where the order date column is greater than the, than the 1753, 4th of January, and where this other date is less than or equal to the new watermark lookup value. This simply means where this other date is less than or equal to this value, the 31st of December 2019 for now. So that's basically what we have there. And I can close this and I can move to the next. Oh, before I move on, I can preview this data and I'm going to provide, we have the name, the old watermark, and then we have this a new watermark and they're going to have this um, type string string and i'm going to provide the value for the old now the value he, here is let me just close this for now i'm going to come here we have this date value i'm going to copy this as a string okay ctrl c and come back here and come here click on the preview and then i'm going to scroll to the left right Ctrl V, and this is going to be the value for the old watermark. And then for the new watermark, this is going to be this date, uh, 31st of December 2019. So in the same order, inside the single quote, I'm going to type in 2019. And this is going to be, and uh, the month is going to come there. This is going to be uh, 12. And then we have the 31st, the date. So in this order, this is what I'm looking for. Let me check this properly. Okay, so I can go on and click OK. So when I click OK, and let me see whether it's going to give us a value or not. So if this is working, that means we are on track. Okay, so um, this is working. So we have the preview of the data. So I'm going to close this for now. Again, I just made some changes. So there shouldn't be any um, codes around this. Okay, just type in the value, and that's it. So I'm going to cl click OK, and... This is working fine. So I can go to the destination now. For the destination, I'm going to just choose the table. Let me just close this. So again, connection is going to be our SharePoint to Fabric Warehouse. And I'm going to choose the 
existing table and i'm going to choose the table from this drop down this is going to be our sharepoint to fabric underscore sales data table again i'm going to click on this preview data and this should give us some value okay so this is working fine pretty fine so i can go on to the last step which is the stored procedure now for the stored procedure i'm going to click on this activities and then add the stored procedure and I'm going to just create a connection from the copy data activity to the stop procedure and i'm going to give this a meaningful name i'm going to call this one um, update watermark stored procedure sp for stop procedure and i'm going to come to the settings and i'm going to choose the same connection and then i'm going to choose the stored procedure name so click on this drop down and then we have this watermark underscore update and then for the stored procedure parameters i'm going to click on imports and uh, this is going to import the last modified date and the table which are these the parameterized uh, stored procedure value this last modified date and then we have this table name okay so let's go back and provide the value so for the last modified date i'm going to come to my copy data activity and come to the source come here i'm going to copy this part of the code just copy um, the new watermark ctrl c and cancel this and come back to the stop procedure so i'm going to come here add dynamic content and i'm going to control v to paste now i'm going to get rid of this Code, okay there shouldn't be any code around here okay just type in art and then you have the activity and then we have the new watermark lookup activity returning the output that contains the first row with this alias so this is basically what i need to do so click okay and then for the table name this is going to be our final table let me just scroll up again copy this ctrl c come back and add the dynamic content for this Ctrl V to paste, click OK. So the setup is completed. Now, I highly recommend you go through this again to be sure everything is looking fine. Again, I'm going to quickly run through the data flow. So this is working fine. So we have the data flow specified. And then for the old watermark value, we have the name. And then for the settings, we specified the SharePoint, the warehouse. And then we use query. And for the query, we specify this select the maximum of the watermark value column and we alias as old watermark value from this table and i can click ok and then i can click ok so for the new watermark lookup and uh, we also use query and then we have the select colleagues the max of the order date so in the case we, we, if we don't have any value in this order date then please run this call this like a case so run this 17 um 530101 and then we alias as new watermark value and then this is going to be coming from our sales data table and then for the copy data we have the source as the query and then we're selecting all the rows from this table where the other data is greater than the old watermark and then where the order date is less than or equal to the new watermark lookup returning the output of the first row in each of the stages and then click ok and then for the destination we have the warehouse and then for the stop procedure we specify the connection procedure name and then we provide the value of the parameters so this is all we need to do i'm going to click on validate and i'm going to click ok so no errors and click on run for now so i'm going to run it manually so i'm going to see the results amazing run succeeded all the five activities are turned into green so we can see the output we have the um, stop procedure the copy data the lookups and the data flow succeeded this is absolutely fantastic now i can come to the run and i can click on the view run and i can see and click on the go to monitor and of course this is still in progress but ultimately this will give us a succeeded status so i can click on the refresh as soon as this is done we're going to go ahead and check the data in our fabric warehouse so don't forget we have data in the warehouse already but we're going to see whether this is working fine or not okay so succeeded now i'm going to come to my warehouse and check this out so i'm going to just 
run these are uh, we will select all the rows from this source data and check it out now don't forget in our source data we have the final 2018 and 2019 that must give us 98 records so i'm going to go ahead and run this and click on run so of course this gave us 196 no problem now so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use a truncate um, statement to truncate all the records first to so truncate now the truncate is a new statement in the sql in microsoft fabric so i'm going to truncate everything there for now Control v and i'm going to run this and this is going to drop every record in that sales data table this succeeded and i can run this again and let's check it out so when i run this i can say i've got no records now i can go to my data pipeline and i'm going to manually trigger the pipeline so i'm going to run it again okay so i just executed the manual trigger of the pipeline again and i'm going to come to the runs come to the view runs and i'm going to see this should give us a succeeded status. So I'm gonna just refresh and once I refresh, okay, anyway, this is gonna work. And let me come to my warehouse and query the sales data again. So when I query, I'm gonna I should be able to see 98 records. Okay, yeah, this is working fine. So we have 98 records. Um, okay, so that's fine. So this is not gonna exceed. So now I'm gonna load more data into this. Now, before I do that, I'm gonna to come to the data pipeline and check the status of the run okay oh this is silly progress all right so we can see we have succeeded succeeded now i'm going to quickly um schedule the pipeline and when i schedule the pipeline i'm just going to allow this to run every uh one minute and i'm going to start the stuff right now and i'm going to go ahead oh, let me just start right now and I will end let's say in some few hours time and once i'm done click on apply so we have scheduled the pipeline which is fine now i'm going to go to my source data the sharepoint and load let's say i want to load 2020 and 2021 i'm going to drag across into this box and i'm going to have four files and then i'm going to go to my data pipeline and I'm going to just wait, come to the warehouse. In the warehouse, I'm going to just give this maybe five minutes and I'm going to run this again. So for now, I can see we have how many records. Um, we have 98. And quickly, I'm going to create a Power BI report on top of this. I'm going to come here, click on the new query, and then I want to use only this uh, this data. I'm going to click on the manage default semantic model, click on this to expand, and then expand, and then focus on this table only. Click on confirm. And I'm going to focus on that table and then I'm going to create a measure that counts rows in that sales data table. And once the Power BI you know, deploys, I'm going to quickly switch back to the warehouse and then create a measure because that's the logic. So, new measure, I'm going to call this one total transaction. And I'm going to use the count rows DAX function and I want to count all the rows in the um, SharePoint sales data and click click enter. So we have that created and I'm gonna go to the Power BI report and close this and I want to search for the total transaction and for now this should give us um, 90 okay oh it has actually worked so we have the 196 so let me come to my warehouse and I'm gonna see this one and call this on Power BI report all right and then click on save and when i come to my warehouse and i can check this out so i can quickly um, scroll down and check this query out let me run this again so you can see we have 196 now i'm going to quickly load more data so i'm going to come to my file and then i'm going to drag 20 22 to 2025 across so i'm actually expecting a total of 392 records for the 2018 to 2025 so these are eight files so eight multiplied by 49 
should give us 392 records. So I'm going to quickly come here. I run this again. So this gave us 392 records. So that's exactly what we have here. We have 8 multiplied by 49, and that gave us 392 records. So when I go to the Power BI, and let's see what we have in the card. So I'm going to quickly refresh this card, and there we go. So we have 392 records. So this is working fine. And I'm going to come to my data pipeline for the last time, come to the rounds. I'm going to click on the view round history, and then we have everything succeeding, which is absolutely fantastic. We're going to go to the go monitor, and then we can see the run kind now these are the two manual triggers that we applied and then we have the schedule so you can say everything is actually looking good so this is how we can perform an incremental data load from the sharepoint folder to the fabric warehouse using the data pipeline copy data activity and then using the data flow i hope you enjoyed this presentation if you do please like share with your friends comment and follow me for more data engineering video Thank you for watching. Bye for now.